Hey everyone, it's Jason. Uh, we are doing the Marvel Legendary World War Hulk unboxing set. Uh, this is video part two where I'm going to go over all the masterminds and villain groups and schemes and all the bad stuff. Check out video one to see all the cool heroes. Uh, not going to tell you who any of them are. Uh, there's a Hulk at least. Um, hang on my Alright, speaking of Hulk, let's start off looking at our masterminds. So, in a set where you get to play as the Hulk, you can fight the Hulk. We have King Hulk Scarson. So, he says Hulk gets plus one attack for each warbound villain in the city and in the escape pile. He leads the warbound. Uh, so anytime they're near him or they run away, he gets extra attack. Otherwise, he's not too bad at 9. Uh, but it says each player KOs a, a master strike. Each player KOs a warbound villain from their victory pile or gains a wound. Alright, and then he transforms. This is a new mechanic for the game. The hero cards are transformed. The bad guys also transform to King Hulk the World Breaker. Who has ten attack, wounded fury. So he gains for every wound you have. So for twelve is other master strike. And each player reveals their hand, and then KOs a card from their hand or discard pile that has the same name as a card in the HQ. And King Hulk transforms. So then he he simmers down a little bit. You know he's like, all right, all right, you got rid of one of your heroes. I'm gonna simmer back down. Um. His tactics are Fury of the Green Scar. Uh, each other player reveals their hand and discards a hero that isn't gray and isn't a strength card. He transforms. So his tactic forces him to transform. Now, this could transform him either direction. So he could get a Master Strike be fighting the bad side, transform into the other side, then grab another Master Strike and have to flip him back over. Um, so it goes back and forth. Um... Oath of the Warbound. Each villain in the escape pile with the highest printed attack enters the sewers. Or the villain with the highest. Uh, then he transforms. Only an issue though. If uh... There's one in there. But he'll transform regardless. He enters knowing in the escape pile. Uh, Revenge from the Stars. Fight. After you put this in your victory pile. Cross dimensional Hulk Rampage. King transforms. So you will have a Hulk but... Nobody else might, unless they've defeated other Hulks or are buying Hulks. Um, and then we have Rule by the Strongest. You get plus one recruit for each of your strength heroes, and he transforms. So all four of his tactics transform him. And he leads the Warbound. So if you watch the first video, you will have seen all of these characters. Or not. Uh, you have not. We have Elo Coffee? Kaifi? Why does this not look like it's focusing very well? I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to get it to focus better. I mean, I can see it, but... Uh, she has spite. Draw a card. Another player of your choice also draws a card. Well, that's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you for being a helpful warbun. Uh, meet the unhive. Uh, look at your top two cards of your deck. Put them back on the top or bottom. Then feast. So you gotta choose what cards possibly get eaten. Two, two Meeks. Uh, no Name the Brood Queen. Wounded Fury. And then Feast. If this Feast on non-gray hero, draw two cards. So you can be stronger. I might have to just draw some cards. Uh, we have Korg. Ambush. Tail a hero from the HQ. Each player reveals their hand and discards a card with that same cost. Boy, Korg hits hard. Uh, hero him. Uh, tail a card from the HQ. Each player reveals their hand and then tails a card with that same cost. The tape said tail is a card from your hand. Oh, boy. Um, and then finally we have the trap. Um, every villain in this set will have a trap. So it says Warbound Rescue. By the end of the turn, put a Warbound villain and a Henchman villain in your victory pile back in the city. Or, 
suffer a wound. Each player gains a wound. So if you don't have a Warbong villain and a Henchman villain, um, each player is going to gain a wound. So you can either choose to not do it or not be able to do it. Um, but I believe it's only the person whose turn it is to do that effect. Um, that's kind of the downside of the tr the trap cards. I kind of wish they would uh, stick around for an entire round. Um, you know, like you play them and it's like, okay, each player has an option of trying to help do this. Alright, since we're still talking uh, Planet Sakaar and the Big Hulk, let's look at the Red King, the guy the Hulk had to def defeat to take over, not, not drop. Um, so here we have, you can't fight the Red King while there are any villains in this city. Oh boy. Um, he always leaves a scar, the Sakaar, Imperial Guard. Uh, Master Strike, the Red King transforms, and each player reveals a tech card or gains a wound. Alright, what's his transform do? He transforms into Old Jeepers, uh, Red King powered armor, he becomes 10, has just a Master Strike, transform, and then play another card from the villain deck, so you get this Master Strike, it's gonna flip him back over, and you can't fight him, so basically... Either you have to clear the entire city to take him out when he's seven, or let him flip over and then try and beat him while he's ten. Um, and then beat him as many times as you can before he flips back over. Uh, so that's a cool ability, actually. Um, Hockey Spike. Each other player without a Red King tactic in their victory pile gains a wound, transforms him. Uh, Royal Oh crap, because yeah, if you beat him once, he's going to transform, and then you have to wait for a Master Strike, or you have to beat him to tra Oh boy. Oh boy, that's that's something. Uh, re Royal Bodyguard. Reveal cards from the villain deck until you reveal a Sakaar Imperial Guard. If you find one, play it. Either way, shuffle all other revealed cards back into the villain deck. Uh... Treasury of Sakaar, you gain plus one recruit for each Sakaar Imperial Guard and Red King tactic in, in your victory pile, including this one. Alright, so he's going to help you out. Uh, and Vast Armies of Sakaar, if this is not the final tactic, reveal the top three cards of the villain deck, play all villains revealed, put the rest back in any order. Oh boy, so you draw that, and then he gains all them people, and then you can't defeat him. Alright, let's look at what this is. Car Imperial Guard looks like. Who do you have to beat so you can fight him? Um, Headman Char. She's got two attack during your turn. Headman Char gets plus one for each villain in your victory pile. So early on he's easy, but then he gets a little bit beefier. Uh, if he escapes, he gain a wound. Um, we have Primus Vang. Who has three attack, gains plus one for each villain adjacent to him. So the more villains in the city, the powerful he gets. Okay. Uh, the Great Devil Corker. Fight with your top three cards of your deck, put them back in any order, then feast. Interesting. And then we have the other Warbound character that we hadn't come across. We have Lieutenant Sierra. Uh, fight. If you outwit Lieutenant Sarah, draw two cards. So as long as you play three cards, different cards, and you fight them, you get to draw two extra cards, which will let you do some extra stuff. And then the trap. Gladiator's Coliseum. By the end of the turn, only play cards from a single team of your choice. Example, Shield, Avengers, X-Men, Warbone, etc. Or, after you draw your new hand, each player reveals their hand, chooses a team, and discards all cards that don't belong to that team. Oh boy. Um, it's easier to probably just play a weak hand than have to potentially discard your entire hand. Alright, um, up next, let's look at who sent. Sent, sent Hulk. 
Health to the planet Sakar, we have the Illuminati Secret Society. This mastermind has plus 4 attack unless you outwit them. So normally they have 11, but they're up to 15 unless you play 3 different cost cards. They always lead the Illuminati. Master Strike, each player reveals their hand and discards 2 cards that cost between 1 and 4. Uh, the Illuminati Transform. They become the Illuminati Open Warfare. They are pissed, it looks like. Uh, whenever a card effect causes a player to draw any number of cards, that player must also discard. Oh boy, and this set has a lot of drawing power in it. Uh, Master Strike. Each player reveals their hand, discards two cards that cost between five and eight. Uh, the Illuminati Transform. Boy, that that would suck. Um, because then if you have less cards, it's harder to play outwit. All right, they have Black Bolt's Omni Shout. Fight each other player reveals their hand and discards two cards with no rule text. They transform. This is kind of like the adapting mastermind uh, effect that came later. Uh, Doctor Strange's Orb of Agamotto. Each player reveals their hand and discards a range or an instant hero. Transform. Hulkbuster's Hammer Fist. Each other player reveals their hand and KOs all tech. And KOs a tech or strength hero from their hand or discard pile. Um, we have Zom's Manacles of Living Bondage. Um, and we'll find out who Zom is in a moment. Each other player reveals a covert hero or gains a wound. That's the Illuminati. Uh, so far, let's just, just focus on Iron Man, Black Bolt, and Doctor Strange. I think the reason is, is because the other Illuminati members um, were Mr. Fantastic, who said, no, don't send him. Um, or he might have. I don't remember. He may have helped. But I think the other one was, I know the other one was uh, Professor X, was I think the fifth member. I want to say I thought there were six people, but I know that Professor X uh, wasn't part of the group or wasn't available at the time when they made that decision. Uh, so I think that's kind of why he's not in there, because Hulk, once he found that out, he really didn't have as much of a vendetta against him. Um, so our looming hottie villains are Doctor Strange. Is a villain. Uh, ambush. Each player who can't outwit Doctor Strange discards a card. So I'm guessing that means you'd have to reveal that you have three different cards. Uh, Hulkbuster Iron Man, who you can also play as. Hulkbuster Iron Man gets three attack unless you outwit him. Cross dimensional Illuminati Rampage. Okay, so what that means is when he escapes. You have to reveal a card that is from the Illuminati villain set. Um, or the Illuminati tactics card. Um, or I think there is um, the Illuminati team might be included uh, from Secret Wars. Uh, which gives you some more options. If that's included. I would assume it would be, but I just have physically the word printed but I mean, if you're including hulkling as a hulk i would include the illuminati team members as part of the illuminati rampage all right so here we have dr strange possessed by zom so evil spirit possessed him uh basically he has these weird funky hands or maces um and he did that because he needed the power to be able to take out the hulk this villain gets plus one for each bystander in the city. Ambush, this villain captures three bystanders. So he comes into play, he captures three, gains three attack. That's another Hulk Buster. Don't know how he got back there. And then we have big old bad Black Bolt. During your turn, any number of times you may discard a card that has no rule text to give Black Bolt minus two this turn. Escape. Each other player discards a card with no rule text, just to, like, focus on his silence. 
And then their trap card is in Enchain the Hulk. Um, by the end of the turn, discard two cards with the same hero class or recruit two cards with the same hero class. Or suffer Interdimensional Hulk Rampage. That's the sec third or fourth rampage in the sect, I believe. You know, third. Second different one. Second Hulk, second different one. Alright, now we're going to look at one of the big Hulk allies turned villains. The Sentry. At the start of the game, shuffle two wounds into each player's deck before drawing starting hands. Oh jeez, that is terrible. I do not like you, Sentry. Um, he has Aspects of the Void, and he has Master Strike. Sentry transforms in cross-dimensional Void Rampage. It has to be a card that says the Void. Um, so he has, like... The one card from the hero version of him that you could possibly use. Otherwise, you're going to have to use possibly some of these tactics. Let's see what he transforms into. The Void. Oh boy, that is scary. Wounded Fury. Master Strike. Feast on each player. If this feasts on a player's gray hero, that player gains a wound. The Void transforms. All right. He likes to give out them wounds, doesn't he? Um, pacifying Light. Each other player reveals their hand and discards two cards with the star icon. Then he transforms. Power of a Million Exploding Suns. Put all heroes from the HQ on the bottom of the hero deck. Each other player reveals their hand and discards each card with the same name as any of those cards. Oh, they would hate you for that. Um... Not your fault, because you didn't see it coming, but... Reflective Teleportation. Choose one of your heroes that costs five or less when you draw a new hand of cards. If thing is turn that hero... Add that hero to your hand as an extra card. Okay, it gives him Teleport. Neat. Uh, transforms. And finally, Repressed Darkness. Uh, fight. Each other player reveals a ranged hero or plays an Aspects... Avoid villain from their victory pile as if playing it from the villain deck. Uh, Mastermind transforms. There's Sentry. Let's see what his aspects are. Who are we fighting? Who is the Void? This big old scary blobby black creature. Um, Infinite Tangrels. Wounded Fury. Ambush. Infinite Tangrels captures a bystander. Um, Shadow Man, fight, you gain two stars. Interesting. So kind of like a, a good bonus of the aspects of the void. Um, Black Anti-Hurricane. Each player simultaneously puts a card from the discard pile into the discard pile of the player on their right. That's not terrible, I guess. Because you're not, you're not, I can't, alright, uh, and then he has demon form, fight, you feast, if demon form feasts on non grain hero, gain a hero from the HQ that costs, of that cost or less, so if you eat a guy, at least you gain, you could potentially gain something back, and then his trap is the psychotic break, uh, ambush, Play another card from the villain deck. By the end of the turn, defeat a villain. You know, it makes sense that there has to at least be one, because this wouldn't count. Um, or, uh, after you draw new hands, Psychotic Break becomes a Master Strike and takes effect immediately. Oh, boy. You better beat someone that turn. Alright, we have two more villains. So... Or two more masterminds, sorry. We're going to look at Modok. Um, he's an interesting villain. So he has all cards out with abilities require four different costs instead of three. He leads the Intelligentsia. Um, Master Strike, each player who can't outwit Modok gains a wound. Then Modok transforms. What does Modok transform into? 
Mogok Network Nightmare. You can only fight Mogok with Recruit, not Attack. Each player who can't outwit Mogok has Mogok Tails a non gray hero from the discard pile. Interesting. So he's not too bad. He actually gets weaker, which is sort of funny. So you have to play four cards to outwit him. Uh, and he only has nine. And then when you flip him over, you have to use stars, but he only has eight. Um, so that's kind of interesting. Doesn't actually get stronger. Um, each other player discards their hand and draws that as many cards as they discarded. Alright, so I think, uh, Brain Scrabble. I think Modak's gonna kind of be the easy guy of the group. Uh, don't get a big head about it. Draw a card for each intellig Intelligentsia villain in your victory pile. Transform. Um, designed only for KOing. Uh, uh, reveal the top three cards of your deck. KO one of them. Draw one. Discard one. I like that effect. Um, redundancy algorithms. Each other player reveals their hand. Discards two cards. They have the same cost. Okay. Alright. So, more well, it's not too terrible. Uh, but let's see what the in Intelligentsia is. All about who are so we have Doc Samson. Doc Samson has four attack unless you outwit him. Uh, KO one of your heroes. If you're fighting Modak, they'll outwit cost four. So you have to play four different cost cards to, to beat him, or you have to do eight damage. If later in the game, it's probably you're gonna get both at the same time. We have the leader. Um, Gamma Fiend. And I wonder if they put Gamma Fiend on here, because I'm trying to remember if there's another leader mastermind in a different set. There might have been. Otherwise, I'm thinking they might have one planned for the future. They just want to be able to call him the leader. Um, Ambush. If you can't outwit the leader, play the top card of the villain deck. Same effect. Alright. Two of those. We also have... <laughs> a cool card here. Cosmic Hulk Robot. Wounded Fury. Ambush. Each player can't outwit Cosmic Hulk Robot. Gain a wound. These guys are all about outwitting. Did I miss a guy? One, two, three. Nope. Ah, because he actually gets two traps. That's such a difference. Well, usually they have one other character with one card. Uh, a Battle of Wits. By the end of your turn, out with this trap. Um, or, after you draw a new hand, discard down to four cards. At least it's down to four and not discard four cards. Um, so that's interesting for a trap. Our final mastermind is, of course, who's going to fight the Hulk? General Thunderbolt Ross. At the start of the game, stack. Eight bystanders next to General Ross as helicopter villains with two attack. You can fight them to rescue them as bystanders. You can't fight Ross while he has any helicopters. He's only six. Uh, he leads Code Red. Um, then Hulk, uh, General Ross transforms and then cross-dimensional Hulk rampage. So he transforms and you have to reveal a Hulk, otherwise you get hurt. Uh, but he only has six. Let's see what he transforms into, though. Dun, dun, dun. He's the Red Hulk. Uh, that's why I put him after Modok and the Intelligentsia, because they created the Red Hulk. So he has Wounded Fury. You can't fight helicopters, and they, but they don't stop you from fighting the Red Hulk. So while the Red Hulk is out, you can fight. You can only fight Red Hulk. You can't take your time to ignore other helicopters. And when he flips back over, you have to finish beating these uh, helicopters first. Master Strike. Hulk transforms, then stack a random bystander from each player's victory pile next to this as a helicopter. Each player didn't have a bystander, gains a wound. So basically, you're beating a bunch of helicopters, beating a bunch of helicopters. All right, I'm getting closer to when I can fight Ross. He flips over and becomes the right Hulk. Ah, oh, crap. So you beat the Red Hulk. All, oh, at least one of each of those bystanders goes back in. And you have to re-beat him again. Um. Alright. Personal Arsenal. 
For each master strike in the tail pile, put a bystander from the bystander stack next to the mastermind as a helicopter. Basically, you want to hope he flips over to the Rag Hulks with the master strikes so you can beat him. Um, bust you down to private. Uh, each other player plays a non-grade hero from their hand to the bottom of the hero deck, then puts a zero-cost hero from their KO pile in their hand. Uh, call out the army, put three bystanders from the bystander stack next to this ma mastermind as helicopters. And Urban Warfare, put a random bystander next to this mastermind as a helicopter from each of these places. The bystander stack, then the escape pile, each city space, and each other player's victory pile. Holy crap. Uh, so he could gain one from the bystander pack, one from the escape, five potentially from each city space, and then one for each other player. So if you're playing a four player game, he could potentially gain nine more shields of helicopters. Oh boy, that could be terrible. But then again, you could also get that one defeated somehow really early on, and then he's. But you still have to beat, beat the eight that are in there, so you could only end up putting four back. Um, or even less if only one player is the one that's defeating all the helicopters, and then they put one back. Alright, who is Code Red? Code Red is Crimson Dynamo. Uh, basically, these are the Thunderbolts, I believe. QJ Colbert here on the HQ. The cost, it costs two less this turn. That. So we have Electra, Red Blades. If you play a Covert hero this turn, tail one of your heroes. So we have lots of red effects. Uh, Thundera. Thundera gets two attack if there are any number of Covert heroes in the HQ. Ambush, put each non-Covert hero from the HQ on the bottom of the hero's deck. And then you might draw more. Um, Punisher, Red Dot Sniper. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it costs zero, tail it. If it is Covert, draw it. And Red She-Hulk. Um, who is, spoilers, uh, Betty Banner. Um, Hulk's Wife. Wounded Fury, each player reveals a Covert Hero or gains a wound, same effect. And then their trap is Caught Red-Handed. Uh, by the end of the turn, recruit a Covert Hero or recruit any two heroes. After you draw a new card, each player reveals a Covert Hero or gains a wound. Alright, so those are some interesting, interesting characters. Surprise there wasn't any, uh... Villains that you could acquire. Alright, so we have one more group of villains who don't have a mastermind that goes from the UFOs. Um, so we have Vapor. Each player reveals a covert hero or gains a wound. The same effect. We have Vector. Each player who reveals an instinct hero draws a card. Uh, we have X-Ray. Each player who reveals a ranged hero may tail a card from the discard pile. And we have Ironclad. Each player reveals a strength hero or tails one hero that costs one or more from the discard pile. Same effect. And then their trap is Unidentified Flying UFOs. By the end of the card, discard a text hero or discard... Or discard three cards. Uh, or suffer. Play two extra cards from the villain deck next turn. Um, outside of that trap, these guys are fairly generic, but that's fine. Cost four, cost four, five, and six. Um, yeah, it could make for some interesting guys to throw in some, some decks. Alright, so that's all the main villains. Now let's look at some henchmen. We got our super generic three attack guys. Um, we have the Sakarian Hivelings. Um, so you can add these guys in to fight against Hulk. Uh, or fight for Hulk, I guess, depending on which direction you want to go. Fight. Look at the top card of your deck, then put it back on the top or bottom. Beast. Um, this could be a neat, just henchman to throw in there, because 
Uh, you're gonna lose a card regardless, but it could let you lose some of them unique them shield cards. Um, but it's also a giant gamble because you could potentially have two heroes sitting on the on your deck and have to get rid of them anyhow. Um, Cytoplasm, Spikes, Henchman, Villain, you know, we got ten of those. Spike, Feast, if Psychopian Spikes, Feast, on Gone, Great Hero, gain two stars. So again, could get rid of something good, could be very bad for you. Um, but again, you should be, maybe, don't always play your villains as someone that's helpful. And then we have Death's Heads. Um, who do not look like the ones I know, so I'm not sure where they're from. But, if you out with these Death Heads, KO one of your cards that costs zero. And get rid of some wounds or some shields. All three have just ways of get, getting rid of stuff. Alright. Now we have... What is up with that? Um, we have a bunch of schemes. Um, sorry, I was confused because the artwork uh, changed on these three cards for whatever reason. They moved everything up. Like, I don't know if it's just more effects. Um, but it's not like they just moved up the thing, they shrunk the artwork. Because, like, Green Goblin's not in there, the Lightning's in there. Um, I wonder if they've done that in any other sets so far. Um, I'll have to look, look later and see if that's a thing. Um, but let's look at our bunch of steam twists we have here. So we have Break the Planet Asunder. Um, seven heroes. Ooh. Stack this quick next to the steam as a tectonic break, then KO each hero from the HQ whose printed attack is less than the number of titanic breaks. When 25 non grain heroes are KO'd. Interesting. Uh, so that kind of gets ditcher your cards. Um, Cytoplasm Spikes Invasion, so we had those villains. So shuffle together 20 bystanders and the 10 Cytoplasm Spikes Henchmen as an infected deck. Twist. Reveal the top three cards of the infected deck. KO all bystanders revealed. All spikes enter the city. Your KO pile and escape pile combined have 18 bystanders or spikes. So you have 30 and they only need 18. Uh, Fall of the Hulks. Uh, six wound per player in the wounded stack. Use exactly two heroes with Hulk in their name. So if you're just playing this set, your options would be uh, Gladiator Hulk or King Hulk. I forgot what his exact name was. And um, She-Hulk or Joe Fix-It Grey Hulk. You have three options just with this set. Uh, so I have Cross-Dimensional Hulk Rampage. Each player gains a wound when the wound runs out of stacks. This should be fun to just play with a like, five-character Hulk set. Obviously, then the uh, steam wouldn't do too much, um, but it'd kind of be interesting to see. Yeah, she wouldn't gain wounds too often. Uh, Gladiator Pits of Sakar. Until the start of the next turn, each player can only play cards from a single team of their choice. Uh, when two villains per player have escaped, or the villain deck runs out. Pretty simple. Um, Mutating Gamma Rays. Take 14 cards from the extra hero with Hulk in its name. Put them face up in the mutation pile. One through six twists. Each player must turn. Each player in turn must. Each player in turn does the following. Put a non gray hero from your hand into the mutation pile. Then you may put a different card name with the same cost from the mutation pile into your hand. Okay, so you could get rid of like a three cost card. Um, to grab a different three cost card out of the mutation pile, but it's gonna be a Hulk. So basically, I'd be like, oh, I got a three cost, uh, you know, Nick Fury. I'm gonna mutate him into the Hulk. That's cool. Ah, I almost like to do is, um, 
And let's just take 14 cards from an extra Hulk. I wonder if it'd be neat to like take all the different Hulk variation cards if you could make a 14 card deck. Like using like maybe two of this one, one or two of this one, you know, say it's turning into like characters turning to different Hulks and gives you a much varying effect. Um something interesting to try. Shoot the Hulk into space. Take 14 cards with an extra hero Hulk in its name, shuffle them into a Hulk deck. Put Two cards from the Hulk deck into a face-up prison ship. Stack next to the shield officer stack. Special, you may recruit the top card of the prison ship stack. When there are 10 cards in the prison ship stack or the Hulk deck runs out. So, for every twist, you're going to put two cards in there. Um, but you want to try and buy them. So that uh, you don't get 10 cards in there. But you also have to beat that uh, steam twist. Subjugate with obedience discs, 11 twists. Put this twist under an HQ that has an HQ has an obedience disc. No space can have more than two obedience discs than any other space. Has no more than two obedience discs, more than two than any other space. Okay. Uh, to recruit a hero in the HQ, you must also pay one star for each obedient disc under it. When each HQ space has two obedience discs. Interesting. Okay. And then finally the big one, the sex named after World War Hulk. Put three additional masterminds out of play lurking. Each of the four masterminds has two random tactics. So you have two tactics per four masterminds. So, okay. Uh, when you defeat all the mastermind tactics, KO its face card and play a random lurking mastermind enters place. One through eight. Swap the current mastermind with a random lurking mastermind. Evil Twist. Okay, so it's like the, similar to the adapting rule that came in the shield set. Um, you're going to constantly be rotating different masterminds around. Alright, that's, that could be interesting. I don't know what that really has to do with World War Hulk as much. Um, I think sometimes they create these things and they're like, well, we have to include that name. Um, so finally we have some special bystanders. Loki, as, uh, making fun of this actor. Um, and that one looks like it's, uh, nope, I was going to say maybe that was the good Loki, but I think it's just before that happens. Um, when you rescue this bystander, choose a hero on the HQ that costs four or less. You get its printed stars and attack. Uh, we have Animal Trainer. When you rescue this bystander, each instinct in Covert Hero, currently in the HQ, costs one less this turn. We have a Tourist Couple. When you rest as bystander, you get plus one star if the rooftops are empty and plus one if the bridge is empty. And Triage Nurse, uh, who looks way too excited to be being grabbed by Thor. Uh, when you rest as bystander, look at your top three cards of your deck. Tail one, discard one, put one back. That's four new bystanders. That's pretty cool. Um, so that is Legendary World War Hulk. Uh, bunch of cool different Hulk characters. We got like Rick Jones, uh, Adamus Chow, and Namora. So we have two more champions. Um, Rick Jones actually can go in a shield deck if you want. Um, I love the Crime Syndicate. Grey Hulk, I hope they release more villain type characters. Um, although this set, there's been like five other sets that come out afterwards and they haven't, so who knows. Uh, yeah, catch you guys later. See ya.